his head went up and was trying to pull the slack out of this hand. The reason he was doing that, I'm riding a new horse that just came in. His name is Charo. I'm not exactly sure of his age. I think he's about four or five, but I'm not positive. I'm just gonna kind of feel him out and see what he's doing, see what I need to work on. I, I knew the horse was a good broke horse. Uh, I wasn't worried about that. I don't know exactly what he's been doing as far as what problems he's been giving him. But we'll feel through those. We'll figure those out. So right here, I, I just got on him. I wanted to kind of walk forward a little bit just to kind of give him a chance to relax a little bit. He's looking around. I know, his, I know this horse has been here before, but I think he was in the little pen over there. I don't think he's ever been rode out here. So I wanted to let him look around a little bit. And I'm gonna start working a few circles. And we're gonna see what we got. See what he's doing and see what we need to work on. So we're gonna we'll walk in these circles. One thing I've noticed in these circles is he's not very soft on his face. Right there, he's kind of pulling a little bit and I can get his head around. Then it looks out again, get his head around. So right off the bat, his head needs to be softer and he needs to just want to walk in this circle right here. Kind of pay attention to how I pull my hands. I'm going to pull my hands different directions to accomplish different things. When his head goes out, I'm generally going to pull in to get the head back in. If I need to work the shoulders, depending on what the shoulder's doing, I'm generally going to lift. Now, now let's see what we got as far as him getting off my legs. I'm going to push with my hand, push with my left leg. See if he'll push over. Push, 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 push. That wasn't too bad. Let's get him back in the circle again. Now right here, I asked him to come back in the circle and he pushed into my right leg pretty hard. I pushed with my spur and he still pushed into that spur. Something to take a note of. I'll work on that in a minute. I'm kind of sending him forward with my legs, asking him to go in this circle. We'll come around and I'll ask him to push his shoulders out again. He's already kind of drifting out a little bit. Let's push, 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 push. So he's trying to turn his head that way. I want the shoulders. I want control of the shoulders. He kind of got stiff in his back right there when I moved my hand. Need to make sure we don't get any kind of reactions like that. Let's go the other way. Since he's pushing his shoulder out this way, I'm gonna change directions. And I'm gonna to go to the right and push his shoulder to the left off my right leg and see what we get. Push, 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 push. He's a lot stiffer on this side. There, I got one pretty decent step there. See his head trying to go off to the left I need better control of his shoulders independent of his head. All I have on him is a plain smooth ring snaffle. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, I have comment or I have a description down below. And in the description, it has links to all the bits that I use. This is just a, a plain D ring snaffle. Nothing special about it. Sweet iron broken mouthpiece. Kind of pushing. You saw his head go up right there. What the what that was about? He was trying to get my hand so that he could push against my leg. Let's talk about that a little bit more. That's a pretty pretty big deal to take note of. Whoa. So I was pushing with this leg, asking his shoulders to go this way. When I pushed. His head went up and was trying to pull the slack out of this hand. The reason he was doing that is in order to get more leverage to push down here, he needs to get his head up and over this way. When his head is this way, he can push harder. He's not going to push and bring his head that way. That's awkward. He'll push and bring his head that way. Just like if you walk up to something, 
and you're going to push that away, you're going to brace with your lower body to push. Well, the way the horse works, he's going to get his head up into the opposite direction of the leg that he's pushing down with. So he's pushing down with this leg, so he was bringing his head that way. So what I'm going to do about that, when I move this shoulder over, I'm going to make sure I bring his head in this way. That's going to take his leverage away, and he'll move over. I don't want to get into a fight with him on this shoulder where he's trying to push down and to the right, and I'm trying to push this way, and we just get into a fight. To avoid that fight, I'm going to make sure his head is over here to take his leverage away. So let's work that out a couple of times. I'm going to walk my circle. I'm going to make sure I get his head to the right. And I'm going to push with my right spur. Push, push. There we go. See his head come in. His head came in off of my push. Push, push. Now he's wanting to kind of fuss about my spur. I'm not going to quit pushing until he kind of gives me a polite response. There we go. I'll reward that one. This horse, since he understood that the push was coming, and I have a general idea of what the owner has been working with, this horse knows what that right leg means. And when he knew that right leg was coming, he was going to get the he was going to brace against that right leg. It's different if this horse did not know how to move over. I know from this horse's history, what the owner has done, and actually from what this horse just told me, that he knew what was gonna happen with the push. If he did not know what was gonna happen, he would have moved and then braced. Well, he didn't do that. He braced as soon as I put the contact. That tells me that this horse knew what the contact was supposed to do. And you have to be able to read that horse to be able to listen to that horse when he tells you what he knows. He told me that he knew what that pressure meant as soon as I put the contact on him. There we go. Wasn't as nice as I would like it to be, but we got a couple of steps and I'm gonna reward. I'm not gonna just keep asking him to push over. If I was to do that, then he's just gonna keep pushing into me. What I'm gonna do is he gives me a couple of okay steps, may not be as nice as what I would like my finished product to be, but he gives me a couple of okay steps, I'm gonna reward and then release. That's gonna create a desire in him to do what I'm asking him to do so that he'll get the, the, get the reward. I'll come around and I'll ask again. Watch what my hand is doing while my leg is pushing. Push, push, push. There we go. Notice I'm not pushing with my leg. Now he's shouldering out this way. Notice I'm not pushing with my leg and just holding it. I am pushing and release, push and release, and I'm timing that push at the same time that the leg that I want to move is coming up off the ground. So when this right foot is coming up off the ground, that's when I'm pushing. He cannot move this foot over if that foot is on the ground and all his weight is on it. So I have to time that push when that foot is coming up so that he can do what I'm asking him to do. If he cannot physically do what I'm asking him to do, then he's just going to get upset because I'm not going to reward, and then he's just going to not understand what he's supposed to do. I need to ask for the movement. Push, push, push. We get the face, there we go. I'm gonna ask for the movement when his body is in a position that he can do what I'm asking him to do. Ask your horse to do a job when his body is in a position that he can do that job. Push, 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 push. Face, push, push, there we go, good boy. I'll talk about another thing. This has come up a couple of times recently. And uh, I had a question about it in one of my comments. And when you're going left, 
you should have your weight on your left seat bone. If you're going right, you should have your weight on your right seat bone. Right here, I'm going left. I'm pushing with this seat bone. What that does, that is bringing my body that way, so I am riding that way. That also frees up this leg so that I can push with that leg if I'm wanting to go that way. Now, when I'm asking him to step out that way, I am shifting my weight to that right seat bone, and I am riding that way. Then we'll go back in a circle. See my weight shifting back and forth. I am centered on the horse. My weight is straight down on the horse, but I have more weight on one seat bone or the other seat bone. If you've seen any of my videos where I'm working cows, I did one recently where I'm showing Hank and I'm doing turns on the fence, pretty, pretty dynamic turns on the fence. I'll put a link up here so you can see that. We're running wide open, turn the cow, run wide open the other way. If I did not do that, I would not be able to stay on the horse. I would, have, I would come off. We're running wide open, turn the cow on the fence. You have to put your weight on your inside seat bone and ride that direction. That way your lower body and your upper body is both riding the same direction. Ask him to push out again. There, that one's a lot better. He's a lot better off my left leg than he is my right. Let's change directions and go to the right again. Also, one thing to notice, he's getting better about his face. He still pulls it up and he's trying to brace once in a while, but it's not as often and there's a lot less effort to it. So by setting him up so that he can do the maneuver that I'm asking him to do and rewarding that maneuver when he gives it to me. There we go, reward, let's go back this way. He's getting some confidence in me and he's not being offended as much when I push with my leg and ask his body to move. I'm gonna work his back up a little bit with what he's doing with his front end, I suspect he needs a little bit of work with his backup. Let's see what we got. Might be okay, might not, I don't know. That actually was a pretty good backup. He stepped nice. I'd like his head to be down a little bit more. And it's okay, that's all stuff that we can work with. Let's zigzag and we're going back again. Bring his shoulders over, and let's back again. With my hand, I'm pretty much just applying just enough contact to say don't go forward. With my legs, I'm picking up his back to ask for the step. Let's bring the shoulders back to the left, and let's back up again. Not bad. So let's go on to another exercise. I want to turn him into the fence a couple of times. What I want to make sure that I'm doing here is I'm getting his front end soft. I'm keeping his front end soft. And so that when he's doing one maneuver with his back end, his front end is up so that he's ready to do another maneuver. We'll just ask for it and we'll see what we get. I'm gonna get over here by the fence. I'm just gonna take my right rein and turn him into the fence. Let's see what we get. See how that back end tank came around? He stepped over to the right a little bit with the front end, but the back end probably moved as much or more with the front end. He had all his weight on his front end. That needs to be better. We need to get his weight shifted to his back end. Let's see what we get with the left turn, see if it's the same way. Pick up my left rein, turn him to the fence. See how as soon as I asked for the turn, he got heavy on his front end and the back end started coming around. That needs to get better. What I'm going to do, I want the back end to move less. So what I'm gonna to do to start with, I'm gonna start asking the back end to push a little bit in the departure after the turn so that he starts wanting to plant this back end so that he can push. Come around and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I need to get the front ends, front end looser, but I also need the back end down and pushing more. Okay, let's turn this time. Turn and push. There we go. 
Just need a couple of steps. That's all I need. I want that back end to push out. Let's do a circle and we'll come around and do it again. Turn and push. There we go. Don't need many trot steps. I just need his brain thinking. Leave after the turn. He was really set up poorly for that one, but we're still gonna go with it, leave. To the fence and go. Felt like his back end was a little bit better there. That's all I'm gonna do of that with him right now. See what we got moving his shoulders off of my right leg since we're in the right circle. See his head go up just as soon as I put leg on him. Need lots, lots more work like that. Probably gonna swap bits next time. I'll put a bit on him that helps me lift his shoulders a little bit better. Something that's gonna help me bring his chin into the point of his chest a little bit better. So this is Charo. This is the first time that I've worked him. If you wanna see some more videos, some more first rides, some evaluation rides, when horses first come in, I'll put a link in the box up here. Until next time, thank you for watching.